Yo, what is good, dev guys? It's your boy Kane. Yes, sir. I'm back with another devlog. In this update, I want to share with you guys how I improved the pipeline of my video game. So let's jump right into it. Let's start with the characters. Earlier this month, I entertained the idea of nanite skeletal meshes as opposed to conventional methods. Using nanite meshes reduced my draw cost tenfold while also rendering less polygons. I was almost sold, but still found it too limiting for the creation side of the process. So I kept my current approach, which is modular skeletons broke down into four interchangeable sections, head, arms, legs, and torso. I also built a tool in Houdini to make the process of parting out a character super easy and efficient. Just to give a general overview of how the process works, first I bring the mesh into Houdini, and then I clean up any unwanted polygons that I don't want to be rigged. Then using a very helpful auto rigging tool, I place some joints and zoop, you know, I have a fully rigged character. I then export it out of the software using the Unreal Engine template to bring it back into Houdini where I finally process the geometry with my tool. In the tool, I just select which geometry is a part of which section. And then that geometry is stored and ready to export on demand. This tool also handles UV unwrapping automatically and lays them out for me. The precision of the UVs aren't as important in my project, but I will go into a little bit more detail about why a little bit later. Once all of my parts is sectioned out, I can export them out as an FBX. I have an option to export each part separately. I have an option to export a first person mesh, which has an entirely different skeleton. And then I have an option to export a texture model that I would then use in Substance Painter to create my procedural mass, which we'll talk about later as well. The last thing I want to get into about my character pipeline is my first person rig. Now this rig took me an entire week to build, but I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. Houdini released a new geometry based rigging system a couple years ago. And while it's a powerful tool, it's not widely adopted yet. This means I wasn't able to just find a video that would help me figure out exactly what I wanted to figure out and help me set up exactly what I wanted to set up when it came to some of my rig features. Everything had to be done by trial and error. I must say, while it was frustrating and at times I wanted to quit and just use a one click option in Blender or my rig that I already built in Unreal, I'm glad I didn't. My rig features are pretty standard minus a few key features that I haven't added yet. It has IK, FK controls, some space switches, and attachment options. This was the hardest part to figure out. In a first person animation, it's normal to animate both the weapon and the character together, but there was no clear way to parent two rigs to one another in Ken effects. This required some ingenuity. I came up with a clever way to merge all the bones of the weapons into the character's bones so that I can animate them both. At export time, I then separate them and export the meshes and their animations out separately. This system can still be improved, but for now, it's all I need to get some good animation up and going. Next up, I want to talk about my new comic book style shader. Now, this shader is heavily inspired by Across the Spider-Verse and Borderlands 3. It's using the procedural mask that I created in Substance Painter in order to place blended materials within the editor on the character. Yeah, you heard me right. I do not make materials inside of Substance. Instead, I place a color value where I want specific materials that I made in Unreal to be placed. Then in Unreal, I use some simple shader mask so that I can single out each color and use it as a black and white mask. I then place a tileable material using that mask. Since the materials are tileable, they can be really low resolution and still achieve high quality. This is also why the UV's textile density isn't as important in my project, but everything has its cons. One being the shader instruction count per material is a little bit higher, but realistically you can't judge how the shader will perform on each platform just based off of the shader instruction count because an instruction is an addition, a multiplication, and if it's really simple math like that, the shader will perform pretty well even if the instruction count is high. This shader system that I'm building is similar to Destiny's die system. I want players to be able to customize their look even further using different color variations for their parts so that no player will look the same. Finally, I want to reveal to you guys my weapon generator tool. This is one I also built inside of Houdini. Its main use is to take a list of weapon parts, configure them, and attach them randomly to create an entirely new weapon. This weapon is then baked down and it could be edited further. This tool works in tandem with an add-on called Kitbash and is created by Houdini's plugin developer by the name of Alexi. Kitbash is a home for a library of pre-made parts, allowing artists to not have to worry about making a full-on weapon, but instead focusing on making a single section of a weapon as high fidelity as they can. 
For this add-on to work properly with my tool, I did have to add some custom Python code, features that didn't exist, like copy the file path of an asset, or to update an asset and its thumbnail, were proud additions that I made on my own using Python. Now, I am in no way a Python coder, but messing around with this add-on gave me a slight introduction to how it's used in the Houdini environment. Okay, guys, that's all I have to show from this past month. From a viewer standpoint, it may not look like much, but the pipelines that I am creating are going to help me to be able to make content a lot faster, a lot cleaner, just be more efficient overall. I would like to add that I am looking for a team to build this game with. I'm also looking for a team to build with in general. I'm currently in the, in the looks for a animator, a 3D generalist, a tech slash VFX artist, a graphics designer, and a programmer, all with at least one year of experience in their particular field. I'm willing to teach and share the knowledge that I have in specific areas. So go ahead and contact me on Discord if you're interested. That's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.